Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. So, if we have any conductor, and uh, now I would like to talk about something called equipotential surface and volume. So we have done the relationship between the E and V, right? Yes. Equipotential uh, surface and you can say volume. <clears throat> So let's say if we have a, no, okay, we have a relation like something like E equals to minus B by DX, let's say EX, something like that. Or we have a, a relationship like minus del B, that's a vector relation or vector way of writing. <coughs> So whenever E is zero, let's say if there is a space in which electric field is absent. So electric field is absent will lead to the fact that the gradient is also zero. And if the gradient is zero, it means the object, the variable, the function is a constant function. It is like differentiation. When you differentiate a constant value, what you get is zero, right? <clears throat> so we know d by d of anything of constant is zero. <clears throat> so similarly, the gradient of a potential is zero. It means it is only possible, or you can say this implies that potential is a constant quantity. So <clears throat> constant may be zero, constant may be non zero, depending on the situation. So imagine if we have a charged sphere in which the charge is given to the sphere externally. So someone has given the charge Q. And because this belongs to the medium called conductor. So from the property of conductor, what we know that the field is going to be zero, right? Yes. Now, what is the meaning of E is zero? It means the potential will not change, whatever it is. I mean, we don't know what it is, but whatever it is, that will not change. So because the charge is present, so we can say for sure that the potential will be there, but the entire volume of conductor will have same potential. So V is going to be constant. And also I can say in this case, it is non-zero, <coughs> okay? So the conductor having this uh, very strict, I mean, property that uh, no matter which part of connector you go to, the potential cannot differ under, ele <coughs> sorry, under electrostatic condition. What does it mean? Potential will differ if the, there is a flow of charge, if it is a dynamic condition. Under electrostatic condition, which means if the charges are at rest, wherever they are, if charges are at rest, that's called the electrostatic condition, and under the electrostatic condition, conductor will have same potential. So every conductor will have same potential under electrostatic condition. So this E is zero is giving you equipotential volume. So if the volume is equipotential, surface is definitely equipotential. So this is the equipotential volume okay the entire thing now what is the benefit of this <clears throat> the benefit is the moment you know the potential of one point you know the potential of the entire point okay so earlier i told the same thing but at that time i didn't give the proof because this is the relation and it comes from the simple relation that <clears throat> the electric field is developed due to the gradient of potential of potential gradient, you can say, or you can say due to the variation of potential over space. So what is fundamental in nature? Fundamental in nature is the charge which creates potential. The difference of potential creates field and the field exert force. 
So if you want to understand the sequence in which things are developed, the so charge is a creator of potential. And the difference of potential creates the field. Okay. So I can say, <clears throat> so potential difference creates field and charge creates potential. And when we have the field, then the force is exerted. So <clears throat> force is the property of field. It is a field which exerts force. And then force will create acceleration. Then you will have velocity change. Then you will have displacement with time. So this is the sequence in which you can think about the what is more fundamental and who creates what. <clears throat> so charge is the most fundamental, definitely. Then after charge, it is the potential. So one should not be confused that what depends on what. So electric field depends on potential. Potential does not depend on the field. Of course, if the field is given, we can calculate, but it doesn't mean that it depends. <coughs> the creator is the potential uh, and the, the effect is the field. So the difference of potential is the cause behind the creation of electric field. So whenever the field is affined, that means there is no variation of potential happening in that volume, that location. And the conductor having this particular property that the entire conductor <coughs> always maintains a potential. Okay. And that is also the reason that when we have multiple conductors, if I draw multiple conductors, let's say some spherical ball. And the moment you make some connection by a wire, And if I ask you how many conductors we have now, how many conductors we have now? So this entire system represents only one conductor. It is because it is no longer isolated. The moment you make a connection, they all become one. And they will make sure that whatever is the potential here, the same is here, the same is here. So all are now single conductor. It is no longer like three conductors as you claim earlier. There's only one conductor under electrostatic condition, all will have same potential. <coughs> now potential same again will never lead to the fact that charges are same. Potential are same is one thing and charges may or may not be same that we have already discussed. So the equipotential surface <coughs> or the equipotential volume and the property of this conductor, uh, the property of conductor uh, will lead to variety of uh, mathematical problems that we can solve. So, so now imagine we have a conductor and it is not charged, conductor, it is uncharged. Conductor. From the center of this conductor, at some distance, let's say uh, x away, we have a point charge. x is not very far, x is very much in uh, proximity of the sphere. And because it is the conductor, so it will have the abundance of free electrons. So whenever you put a charge in the vicinity of a is, I mean, conductor, the induction will occur. And as a result of induction, opposite charge will induce in the facing surface, right? So some negative charge will appear here, isn't it? Yes. <clears throat> and because some negative charge is appearing on this side, so we can say that some positive will appear on the other side. Uh, we cannot claim about the the nature of distribution, <laughs> we have no idea about the distribution, whether it is uh, uniform or non-uniform, but of course, it is going to be non-uniform for sure in this case. So we have a charge induction on a conductor and uh, what else we need to know that the charge induced will have equal magnitude. 
because the net induced charge <coughs> on any isolated system is always zero. Okay. So what we must remember net induced charge. I think I have written this many times. Uh, charge on any isolated system is always zero. Okay. Now let's say if someone is asking you this problem, what is the potential of the point P? How to get the potential of point P? If it is, if it had been, uh, you know, in form distribution, we could have uh, calculated using the formula KQ by R. But that is not the case here. We have plus also, we have minus also, we have another uh, plus Q on the right side. So how to find the potential of a random point in the uh, random point of the this connecting sphere. So now here we use the concept of <coughs> superposition. So potential will also follow the principle of superposition, which means potential at any point will be the sum of potential to all charge distribution. But we also know that there's a property that the conductor volume is equal potential, which means if you know the potential of one point, that is going to be the same for point P, point Q, point R, point S, and so on. So <clears throat> if I look at the center, and center is very convenient place because center is the place at which the all induced charge will contribute how much? So if I ask you, what is the potential at O due to induced charge only? Zero. And the answer is correct. It is zero because the plus will create same as the minus will create. And luckily, no matter what is the distribution, the distance is same, the R is same for all. And therefore, if you integrate that K D Q by R at O, because R is a constant quantity. And if you add all D Q, it will give you zero. Correct. So the potential due to the induced charge at the center is zero. <clears throat> and what else I said, I said potential follows the principle of superposition, which means potential at O <clears throat> due to charge Q kept outside. So potential due to charge uh, Q at the O will be how much? KQ, X, uh, KQ by X. So that Total potential at O will be how much? KQ by X. So it is same as KQ by X, right? Yeah. Now the benefit is because as I said, because the conductor is equal potential, you mean not to worry because once you know the answer for one point, the same is going to be true for every other point of the entire volume and so the circle. So can we say this is the P? So yes. now we know the potential at P, right? <clears throat> and this is the net potential at point P, no matter what. Okay. Now let's say, if I ask a question that, what is the potential at uh, this point, at some random point, I choose a random point P dash, and I call this distance as R. And now my question is, the net potential at P dash will be how much? So do we need to calculate or we can write directly? Direct. How much? KQ by X. KQ by X. KQ by X. But if I ask you another question that uh, what is the potential at P dash due to induced charge? Because this will have the contribution from two variety of charges. One is the induced charge, right? And other will be due to the charge Q, again, similar fashion. The net will not change, but the individual contribution will change. And therefore, if I call this as a, 
ఇవి ఉన్నది సో విపి డాష్ డ్యూ టు క్యూ వి కనెక్ట్ అగైన్ ఇట్స్ వెరీ ఈజీ ఇట్ ఇస్ కేక్ బార్ సో దే ఫోర్ ద ఇండ్యూస్ కాంట్రిబ్యూషన్ వి కెన్ ఆల్వేస్ కాలిక్యులేట్ ఫర్ ఎనీ రండమ్ పాయింట్ వన్స్ యు నో ద ఆన్సర్ ఫర్ ద సెంటర్ so this is the induced contribution at point p <clears throat> and we are only taking the contribution due to the induced charge you know? and uh, luckily we know the contribution of the uh, charge q and that is how you can get the answer is this clear yes clear so <clears throat> this was the concept that you should be aware of now what is equipotential surface and what is its property so a surface you can draw some random surface So let's say this is some random surface, and I'm saying that this is equal potential. So the potential difference between any two point on the surface will be zero. Yes. So if the potential difference is zero, we can say that. Uh, there is no question of electric field parallel to the surface anywhere isn't it yeah. so <clears throat> if we choose two point here and here can we have the component of field in this direction is it possible to have the component like this no no of course it's not possible because both are v and because there is no gradient along this line so we can say the field parallel to the surface will be always zero so in case of equipotential surface the component of field parallel to the surface do not exist so what we can say in case of equipotential surface in case of equipotential surface <coughs> component of field i like component of electric field along the surface do not exist and if do not exist, if the field do not exist along the surface then how it will exist so near the surface the field will be always perpendicular perpendicular so if you choose any random patch and if you try to visualize the electric field there it will be always here and of course after long distance it will bend and all but at this location it is going to be like this so we cannot draw the entire field everywhere in the vicinity of surface the field is going to be perpendicular and that's it in the vicinity of surface the field is going to be perpendicular always perpendicular so we, this is what we have discussed in the uh, flux uh, so electric field lines chapter also now you can also understand that it is the equipotential concept which is leading to the result that the only field which can exist is the perpendicular surface right it's easy to prove mathematically as well so let's say if you say no let's say 
if I believe that the field is like this, making an angle theta and A and B are two points. So we can say the delta V will be how much? E cos theta into AB, correct? If you know the formula of potential difference, component of field into the distance, right? Yes. So because it is equipotential, this must be zero. And this means because E is non-zero, AB is non-zero, so cos theta must be zero, which again implies theta is not. So there are many ways to prove it, but uh, what you need to understand that for uh, equipotential surface, the field in the vicinity, I'm saying close to surface, I'm not saying everywhere else. The field in the vicinity is bound to be perpendicular. And that is exactly what happens if you have any conductor. That is the last lecture we had the electrostatic pressure. And you all were under pressure of understanding what is happening there. So for any surface, because it's a conductor, can we say this entire volume is equipotential? Yes or no? Yeah. Yes. And if the entire volume is equipotential near the surface to go, the direction of field will be? only normal to the surface, understood? Yes. There is no question of field parallel to surface. Is this clear guys? Yes, sir. yes sir. So very close in the vicinity of this surface, if you are, if you are very close to the surface here, let's say, the field at this location is bound to be perpendicular. There is no option. Okay. So the force always, so <clears throat> if we have some charge present on the patch and we have discussed that the E will have a contribution from the patch and a contribution from the remaining except patch. And both terms are to be same, right? And this net was sigma by absolute not, which is sigma is the, the localized surface charge density. And then each will contribute equally that we prove through some heuristic or you can say some uh, logic you can say. So the E patch turns are to be sigma by absolute not. E remaining is uh, so E patch is uh, sigma by two epsilon. E remaining is also sigma by two epsilon. And we use the concept of infinite sheet and all to arrive at the logic. Okay. Anyway, so the equipotential uh, surface is very very important concept, and uh, <coughs> it always works. So to define some logic, we use the concept. Now. Each surface represents equipotential. So if I bring two surface, then you will have difference of potential, okay? So how the field lines will be between two surfaces? So let's say if you, if you draw some equipotential surface, this is the surface number one which is maintained at V1 potential. And then you draw another surface. And now you say that this is maintained at another potential V2. So now this space between the V1 and V2 is the space of potential difference. And because there's a difference of potential, we expect some electric field. So now the question is how the electric field will be. It's very difficult to draw, but we can say something. The difference is constant. So we know that E equals to delta V by delta X, let's say separation. I'm talking about the value. Now, if you choose any two point, what is going to be same? For any pair of point from the two surface, if I choose one point on the first and another on the second, the difference is going to be same, isn't it? Yeah. 
Now, if the difference is same between the point one and one dash, between the point uh, two and two dash, or you can take three and three dash, the delta V we cannot change. So the field strength, can we say will be proportional to the separation? Yeah. Which means more the separation, weaker the field. Yes. And that is the fact also that uh, the one and one dash, if I say the electric field here is, if I choose some random point P, Q and R, and if I ask you that, uh, can you tell me the inequality of the electric field strength at uh, P, Q and R, what will be the answer? Which will be the strongest field? E, Q. Q right. So the field at Q will be the strongest? Yes. The then next the thing R. is R. Then the the next P. Thing is P. So we say that uh, it is the separation which decides the strength of uh, electric field uh, between the two equal potential surface. So what is the meaning of two parallel surfaces? The separation is also same. Yeah. It means the field will be uniform. That's the whole idea. So two parallel surface uh, and of course I'm saying two parallel equipotential surface will create the uniform field. Understood? Yeah. Okay. I mean uniform means uh, the way I'm saying uniform is uh, it will be symmetrical. The value will be same. Okay. So let's say if I draw two surfaces like this. And it's, these are spherical envelope. Spherical. Mind you, equipotential surface is not a physical surface. It's just a, a spatial coordinates at which potential is found to be equal. It is not something physical. It could be. It cannot be. We cannot guarantee that when I'm drawing something you will take it uh, literally as a surface. Okay. So when I'm saying equipotential surface, it means it is a coordinate of points. It's like a locus in a three-dimensional locus. You can see it's a locus. It's a <coughs> coordinate of points at which the potential is going to be same. Okay. Now, what you really need to understand or remember is that if we have a point charge, a point charge will create what kind of surface? Spherical. A point charge will always get a spherical surface. If we have the infinite line charge, then it will create cylindrical surface as yeah. equipotential, right? Yeah. And if we have the infinite sheet, it will create parallel surfaces, right? Yeah. So these three surfaces you are supposed to remember. That if we have one charge, we can expect a spherical envelope over which the potential we can assume to be same. Again, it is not a surface in a physical sense. It's not like a blanket you're buying. It. it is just a space coordinate. And we are trying to show it in a, in a visual fashion just to make it easy to understand. So there are three types of possible uh, equipotential surface that you should uh, remember because you may get some question to solve. The of course is spherical one, which is due to the either point charge or the spherical charge distribution, correct? Yes. And uh, the second will be infinite line charge, which will create the cylindrical equipotential surfaces and infinite sheet will create a planar equipotential surfaces understood clear yes yes so one by one one by one we'll take some example <clears throat> so So if let's say if this kind of equipotential surface is given to you, and if I'm saying that this is spherical envelopes, so 
the source will not be given to you. You have to figure it out that what is the source possible. Okay, so you can always play a source as a point charge to solve such question. Okay, so this is what you will assume. So I'm going to assume a point charge. Now, what they will give you the potential here is V1, potential is V2. This is A in, uh, distance from center. This is B. So, given the potential uh, V1, V2 at A and B, we can, in fact, understand everything. So, can we add V1 equals to KQ by A? Yes. So KQ itself is A V1. Yes. See, neither K was given nor Q was given. So now, but we know that KQ is equal to A V1. And V2 is again KQ by B. Correct? Yes. So V2 we can add is A V1 by B. So you yes. will be asked to relate a potential. So they will give you the equipotential surface and their potential. And they may ask you, can you relate it? So the answer is, yeah, we can relate. It's very easy. That V2 is AV1 by B, isn't it? Yes. Sir. So you can say if we have multiple, if for a spherical question, we can add as A1, V1, A2, V2, A3, V3, and so on, right? If A1, A2, A3 are the radii, and V1, V2, V3 are the potential of those surfaces, right? You can add like this in general. Yes. Yeah. You can see this is a v1 equals to b v2. I'm saying if a1 a2 where let me mention this. So in general, in general, where a1 a2 a3 dot 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 are radii and v1 v2 v3 dot 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 are potential. Okay, so this is the one, one variety of question that will come across in AC or more or any other book. The second will be like this. So what you're looking at right now is the infinite line charge. First of all, this is the infinite line charge uh, with the lambda as linear charge density. And what I have drawn, the two cylinder are representing the two equipotential surface for the given line charge. So line charge is the reality. And these surfaces are hypothetically drawn surfaces, which represents the equipotential surface. So we can say for sure that the potential of this surface is going to be constant and same 
for this. So if someone will ask you, can you find the potential difference between this and this? It really doesn't matter. You find this and this or this and this, it's the same thing. So how to find the potential difference between these two surfaces having the radii, let's say A and B or R one, R two, as you wish to say. Now we know that we cannot find the potential of infinite objects. Potential is generally not defined, right? Yeah. yeah. So anything which itself is infinite, in, infinitely long, I cannot find the infinity for a reference. And because of the lack of reference, I cannot tell you the exact answer. But having said this, there will be potential. See, when we say we cannot define it, means we cannot express. But if there is a charge in nature, it will have potential. Whether we are able to mathematically express or not, that's a different story altogether. But in the very beginning, I said charge is the, the most fundamental thing and charge is the creator of potential. So if charge is there, potential is bound to be there. We cannot reject that possibility. And once we have the, that possibility, then we can definitely have the equal potential surface. I cannot tell you what is V1, I cannot tell you V2, but I can tell you something. That what is the difference? And how we are able to find the difference? Because we have a very simple, beautiful relationship that delta V is minus E dot dr. Correct? Or E dot dr, we have done this. Yes. So we know that if it is a lambda is positive, the field will be like this, radially outward, isn't it? Yeah. And so if I move from this surface till this surface along the field, I can get the difference. So the E we know E and the DR will be parallel. So this turns out to be E DR cos rho. And the E we can express in terms of lambda if we have, if you know the Gauss law, you can find it or anyway, if you know the formula, you can write it. So anybody who can uh, tell me the E value, what is E? At a distance R, of course, we have to write E as a function of R. Any general Lambda radius. by two pi R, absolutely not. Very good. And now we are going from A to B, right? Because that's, uh, sorry, R1 to R2. So we are going from R1 to R2. So the delta V, we can get the answer, which is Lambda by two pi, absolutely not. Ln R2 bar 1. I will keep the minus intact because that is representing that as you go away from the, the line charge, the potential will decrease. That's where the difference is negative. If you want only value, you know the answer. Okay. So, I mean, they may ask you a question like if I want to take a charge Q from here to here. So, moving between the two equipotential surface. Once you know the difference, you know the work done. So what is the work done in doing so? They may ask you. You can say the work done by the external equals to? Q delta V. Q delta. And here the work is going to be negative because we are trying to move slowly, right? Delta V is negative, so this is going to be minus Q. If I ask you, what is the work done by system? So that's interesting answer, it's positive. So work done system we is, uh, we know already the answer is minus Q delta, right? So that will give you positive answer, which means system is doing positive work. And as a result of this positive work, system is actually imparting energy to the charge. And that's logical. If you release the charge from the inner surface, it will accelerate towards the outer surface because of the force, right? Isn't it yeah. logical? Because yes. the electric field is radially outward, charge is positive. So force will be radially outward. So charge will accelerate. So its velocity will increase. And that is also evident from the fact that that system is doing positive work. So the system is, uh, I mean, that losing the charge, losing some energy potential and gaining some kinetic energy. 
So anyway, you may be asked so a question in the, such questions, uh, although we cannot find the potential, but that will not restrict to find the potential difference. So you can always find the potential difference even in such scenarios. So there is again one more famous question that uh, you should be aware of. So if I draw, <coughs> if I draw equipotential surfaces like this. So what could be the possible source of such surfaces? A plane, infinite sheet. Yeah, it's an infinite sheet. So such surfaces are possible if we have infinite sheet. So let's say each is inclined to angle 30 degrees. I think this is from SC Burma. And uh, okay, let's say this is A comma zero, two A comma zero, and so on. If the potential of this is V one, V two, V three, I mean I will write a band this way. So keeping the separation constant, the difference is also going to be same. It's called 10, 20, 30. 40 and so on. So what will be the direction of electric field between any two surface? This is the potential value in volts. So the field will be always from which potential to which potential? High to, low. potential to low. Higher to lower. High to lower. So one thing is clear that field is going to be high to low. And what will be the direction? Perpendicular to the given thing. Both. So the direction of field will be like this. And therefore, in order to find the strength, what is the strength value? E equals to. So we have to find the delta v upon delta x separation. And we always find the separation in the, the least separation, which means the perpendicular separation. So delta v is clearly 10. What is delta x? Can you tell me? A. A sine A, A. Oh, six. A, A sine thirty. A, A is not separation. A is the coordinate on the x-axis. Separation means perpendicular separation, right? So you can clearly draw a perpendicular from this point to this point, and you can get a triangle in which you can easily calculate the separation. This is your delta x. So that's why this is confusing. The A is not separation. A is this length, which is in fact uh, some sort of hypotenuse for this triangle. And the separation will be A sine 30 degree. And so the strength of field between the surfaces will be 20 upon A. And this also gives another unit of measurement of electric field, which is volt per meter. Delta V by delta X, which means the volt per meter is the unit of electric field apart from the Newton, Newton per coulomb. So there are two units in which electric field is measured. So one is Newton per coulomb, and there is volt per meter. <laughs> okay. Yes. All right. So I think we are done with the equipotential circuit. So next is definitely the, now we can go to the dipole.
so i have talked about the moment in chapter called uh, rotational maybe not rotation center mass so moment is a purely mathematical uh, definition and when you say moment with some prefix the prefix uh, will give you one meaning and the moment will give you a different meaning so in physics the moment refers to multiplying with position vector and therefore the dipole moment is a fairly a concept depending on the origin or the choice of frame of reference so there are many moment which you have heard in physics so how many moment you have heard in physics mass moment so is multiplying mass with r vector its position like a point mass in case of point mass we write like m into r we have moment of uh, inertia inertia yeah moment of inertia yeah. so moment of moment so it's called moment of mass moment or second mass moment which is like uh, the moment and because i have to take one more moment so we'll take the dot product so it becomes mr square we have moment of force which we'll write as r cross f so this is called torque yeah we have moment of momentum which is like r cross p we call angular momentum we can also have moment of charge which can it is uh, qr just like mr so mass and charge are in nature's only two fundamental property and because these are two most fundamental characteristic of any matter so they behave in a similar fashion and that is why gravitation and electrostatics will have quite a lot similarity in terms of understanding in terms of theory formula and both follows the inverse square law both follows the concept of center of mass center of charge just like you have the idea of center of mass there is a similar equivalent idea of center of charge so both behave in a similar fashion the only difference i have discussed is mass cannot have a polarity so we cannot have the negative mass and positive mass but charge can be of two types because it shows attraction and repulsion mass is only of one type because it only shows attraction so based on the interaction we have classified charge of two types mass is of one type and because of this uh, lack of uh, <coughs> the split in the interaction the entire concept of polarization dipole will not exist in case of gravity okay maybe in some advanced physics they may introduce something called the the gravitational polarization in the context of dark matter they may introduce such concept because the dark matter is basically a negative of a matter it's a opposite of matter and uh, it is said that when dark matter will meet the matter it will annihilate each other and will create the pure form of energy and the universe is said to be i mean mostly dark matter and a few matter we are having more of the dark matter and less of the matter and that is responsible for the the big bang uh proper concept of mean proponent of those who are proponent of big bang theory they believe that the universe is expanding but uh, we all know that gravity attracts right so technically this will come closer no 
so technically all galaxy planet and so on they should come closer but the big bang is integral universe is expanding yes. so to counter this idea they said that okay, the universe is made of more of dark matter which is having the reverse property than matter so as matter is attracting and because the dominance of dark matter is expanding it so that's all proponent uh, here and there there's no mathematical proof or some experimental proof but anyway this is how the cosmology is working so moment is everywhere and uh, the dipole is not something external I mean, the dipole moment is basically moment of you can say two charge which is again not correct but at this stage okay that's okay for j level so when you say die so here die means basically two but die can have a variety of meaning so dia means through and die is not through so dia means through but uh, die is here uh, uh, two, let's say in the context of two, and basically pole is representing charge. So that moment of two charge technically is called dipole. Moment. It's a moment. So what you do is you take some plus charge, you multiply with its position vector. You take some negative charge, <clears throat> and you multiply with its position vector, and then you add up. So you call this as dipole moment, and that is the end of the world. So dipole is a concept uh, dipole moment is a mathematical concept uh, and charge moment is actually more fundamental concept but it is like they have messed up with some literature in the past i mean it's like they have made some mistakes but uh, we cannot blame them so the whole idea is <clears throat> what is dipole if someone will ask you what is dipole so we say that it is a system of charges in which it is a system of charges in which summation of all plus charge is non zero, summation of all minus charge is non zero. But summation of all charges is zero. So we have some positive, we have some negative, but individually they are not zero. But if you add plus and minus, the net is zero. So any system of charge in which the individually charges are not zero, but the net is zero, such system is called dipole. That is the whole idea. And just like the concept of center of mass, we do have the concept of center of charge. So in the context of dipole, when we define the dipole moment, in the context of dipole, when we define the dipole moment, then dipole moment we define as, what is dipole moment? So dipole moment is simply defined as the product of modulus of positive or negative charge into separation between their center of mass or center of charges so what does it mean is it is the uh, you can take any plus charge let's take plus charge and you have to multiply with separation between their centers just like center of mass that is the precise meaning and if i represent a, okay just like this let me go the center mass concept again so let's say in space we have some positive distribution of charge, random distribution of charge. It is like a colony or cluster. This is a colony or cluster of plus charge. 
we have a negative column of minus star. It, some overlapping is also possible. Don't worry about it. But if we have a cluster of plus and cluster of minus, so then we can have center of plus. So this is like a center of mass. So I can say C plus the center of mass. And this is like a C minus. So if I have some coordinate system, then this center will have some position vector, let's call it R plus. And this center will have a coordinate vector, let's call R minus. And this separation is a very famous, which you are aware of. This is called D. Or you can say L. You can choose whatever symbol. And D is particularly separation of center and center. It is not about individual charge, but just taking a center. So basically the dipole moment by definition, if you use the vector definition, it is, and if I say this net charge is, let's say, how much? If I take this as Q and this is minus Q, just for convenience. It's not like only one charge is called Q. Q can represent multitude of charges. So if one we have plus Q and minus Q, the dipole moment that is plus Q into its position vector in a chosen coordinate system and the minus Q into. So you are doing the moment addition. You are saying dipole moment. So you are taking the moment of plus and minus charge, you are adding it. That's called dipole moment. That's it. So in this context, this becomes R plus minus R minus. And if you know the triangle law vector, you can clearly see that R plus plus D vector is R minus. Okay. Correct. Oh, so yes. I made a mistake. I should have taken D in the reverse lines. Yeah. So R minus. Yes. Yeah, it look, look better actually. We take a D vector in the minus to plus. Let me rectify this. So this take D vector, which we take from uh, negative towards plus, then this will work out better. So R minus plus D vector equals to R plus. So the D vector we can write as R plus minus R minus. And therefore you can see the dipole moment vector will have the formula Q into D. And not only this, it is also giving the exact direction of the diplomat, it is from minus towards plus center. Okay. The direction is from the negative center towards the positive center. That is how we have defined the D here. And now if you take the modulus, you can simply write QD. So, one should not be confused with the fact that Q is not representing one charge. Q is representing the, the total positive charge. <clears throat> now, dipole moment need not to be for equal charges. Even if the plus Q1, plus Q2, plus Q1, minus Q2 is present, we can have dipole moment. Basically, again, it is some literature mistake. The moment of charge, they just called dipole moment. Okay, because it was developed under the assumption of dipole and so the same literature was carried out. But what we actually call this is called charge moment and charge moment uh, will never demand that uh, the charges must be same. So to find the dipole moment, the charges may be all positive charges also okay. All negative is also okay. Some positive, some negative is also okay. Unequal positive, unequal negative is also okay. For dipole moment calculation, everything is okay. But when we say dipole moment of a dipole, it's a very different concept. When I say just dipole moment, and if I'm not referring to some dipole configuration, 
I am free to take any kind of charge. But when I say dipole moment in the context of a dipole, then the equality will matter. And then we have to take equal positive and equal negative. So dipole of a dipole moment is different from just dipole. So this is basically, if I say more precise, this is actually dipole moment of a dipole. Then this is the difference, which I wrote here. And because this is very commonplace in uh, JE par I mean, parlance, if you go to any textbook of JE uh, level, they do not make this, uh, such a distinction. In the higher, uh, uh, you can say, I mean, the books of higher education, if you go for master's or graduation, you will see those differences. So as of now, you just believe, OK, what you're learning is sufficient and such uh, adequate literature is OK for G inadequate it's not adequate so now you know what is dipole dipole is simply arrangement so if i ask you let's talk about co2 so co2 is a dipole yes or no so you need to understand the the geometrical structure of co2 how it is co2 is what is the shape linear so C double bond O, double bond O, correct? Yeah. yeah. And we know the electronegativity of uh, oxygen is more than carbon. More than carbon. So it will try to pull the, the electron cloud, or you can say the charge, uh, the sharing charge, the sharing electron. So it will acquire the partial negative because the charge is more inclined towards the O than the C. And so this will correspond to some partial positive development and same will with your minus and plus now if you look carefully we have some plus charge so is the plus charge zero no is the minus zero no but look at the center of charge just like center mass the all positive charge is here and all negative charge center is also here do you realize this because yeah. of symmetricity yeah. you can imagine you can replace the minus with some mass equal mass if M and M are equal, then the center mass will be at center, isn't it? Yeah. So this leads to the configuration where there is no gap between the charges, right? Do you realize this? Yes. So center of charge is coinciding, isn't it? So what is the yeah. D vector here? D vector is? Zero. And therefore the dipole moment, which you write in chemistry, normally use the mu symbol. Oh. The dipole moment, but in physics, I will be right. P. So the dipole moment will be zero now. Yeah. And it is the dipole moment which gives the ionic character, right? So we say it is uh, having a percentage, ionic percentage covariant if you study in chemistry. Yeah. So CO2 is having non polar character. So we call it a non polar molecule. See, having the charge will not make you polar. Having the dipole moment, which is non-zero, will make you polar. So because the dipole moment is zero, this is called non-polar moment. The other way of thinking is, if you take one pair of plus and minus, this is creating one dipole moment like this. Just like vectors. Just like vectors, and they cancel out each other. Yeah. In chemistry, we represent it by this symbol and reverse order. I mean, that's their notational issue, but this is the reality. Okay. So if we talk about H2O molecule, so we know O will have the two lone pairs and the H and the H. Polar molecule. And definitely the partial negative and partial plus So we have two dipoles here, one oriented like this, other like this, and definitely they will never cancel because we have some angle. So as per the valence electron repulsion theory, you will get some angle less than the regular value because of the repulsion. And if I call each dipole as P, then I can say my dipole moment will be 
टू पी क्रॉस थीटा बाई टू राइट द अदर वे ऑफ थिंकिंग इज द सेंटर ऑफ माइनस इज हियर बट द सेंटर ऑफ प्लस इज हियर एट द मिड पॉइंट एंड देर फोर कैन आई मेट दिम स्टेप दिंग This is the data. We are doing astrophysics. And you can clearly see the center of minus charge is here. And the center plus will be where? Exactly between the two H atoms. Yeah. And therefore, the net dipole moment is going to be like this along the line of symmetry. And because the net dipole moment is non-zero, we can call it. polar moment so if you talk about the ch4 now it is having the unique uh, tetrahedral structure and see nature always follows the concept of equilibrium so why tetrahedral is uh, is stable because it is by default as per the vector the sum of all vector is zero so it's a quite a balanced molecule and therefore its stability is very high okay so in this case in between c and h which one is more electronegative between c and h the electronegativity is more for carbon or hydrogen tell me carbon so this will be minus this will be plus and therefore you will have four dipoles like this in fact if you talk about the center mass concept the center of plus charge will be again at c on Understood. Yeah. So the shape is such that the center plus and minus will be same, and therefore again it will lead to the zero dipole. So again CH four is non-polar molecule. Therefore, when we talk about the solubility of molecules, it depends on the dipole moment. So more the dipole moment, you can say more the solubility. So CO two is sparingly soluble, as we see in chemistry, because it's uh, having zero dipole moment. And uh, in water we have the hydronium ion is three O plus, so of course the attraction is very very weak. So we call it a dipole dipole uh, interaction. So they induce some dipole. Of course, when you come under the influence of external field, your dipole moment, which is right now zero, will not be zero always. So we can induce also. We can shift the distribution when you go in the vicinity of other molecule. So their electric field will affect you. and that shift will create the dipole dipole interaction again so some solubility will be there so dipole concept is clear what do we mean by dipole yeah. yes so let's say if i give uh, you a simple triangle this is this is equilateral triangle it's a equilateral triangle of side length a this is plus 2p this is minus 2 minus 2 so what will be the dipole moment for this entire setup and this is very easy also so you can clearly see the center of plus charge I hope you also see the center of negative charge. Yes, sir. Yes, and sir. I hope you can see the separation. Yeah. So simply take any positive charge and multiply. So it will be a by root three 
uh, from the plus to a by root three. Oh, sorry. Uh, it will be passing from the set part, right? Uh, root three by two a. That will be the length and into two. Oh, it will be root three q. Yeah, root three q a. Yes. See, first of all, the if you take either plus or minus, what is the magnitude of positive charge? Two q. And the center of negative is here, na? Yeah. Yeah, sir. Root so three. We need to find the separation two. between the separate centers. Which is pretty easy to find. It's a, uh, root, three a by two. root three this by two. So the dipole moment of the system turns out to be root three Q A, right? Yeah. If you want to solve by the vector method, take some origin, write the coordinate, write I cap, J cap, and have fun. So let me demonstrate that also. Now the choice of coordinate will be up to you. For dipole moment, the see now not again that's interesting. When we try to find the dipole or uh, moment of a dipole, the choice of origin doesn't matter. But when we try to find the dipole moment of some random distribution of charge, not necessarily where the summation is zero. If it is non-zero, then for every origin there is a different answer, isn't it? Do you realize yes. this? Yes, sir. So if we have, let's say, minus Q1 plus Q2, then every origin will be different. So if I choose origin here, there is a different answer. If the origin I choose here, there is a different answer. If I choose here. So we cannot talk about the uniqueness of dipole moment if it is not a dipole. If it is a dipole, then there is a uniqueness because only in case of dipole configuration, the choice of origin doesn't matter. That's why we can directly calculate without any origin. Understood? May not be. Anyone having doubt in this part, which I just discussed? It's a difficult one. No, sir. So no one is having any doubt. That's really cool. Sir, no Let's no. say if I choose this as origin, if I choose this as x-axis, as per my convenience, then uh, the way of writing dipole moment is in vector form is take every individual charge one by one and write its position vector in i cap j cap that's easy so minus q at the origin will have zero i zero j i have no need to write it here that's ridiculous then minus q will have a i cap i hope you can understand this part. yeah and then the plus two q will have a by two i cap plus root three a by two j cap i yes. hope this is clear yes and uh, if you rearrange and take a modulus with the same answer, so you can clearly see this will cancel out, right? Minus Q A I cap and 2 Q A by 2 I cap will cancel out. So what you're left with is 2 Q into root 3 A by 2 J cap. And that is in fact giving you the perfect direction also, that it is along the J axis, uh, Y axis, right? That's logical also. This is the direction, right? So in the given diagram, you can clearly see this is the dipole moment direction. And uh, in vector form, it is coming exactly the, what we are looking for. So choice is yours. I mean, when you get confused, you can use the vector method. If you can see the plus minus uh, easily, I think uh, you can use the concept of your center of uh, uh, charge and get the answer. So let me give you some random question. It is like center of mass calculation. So if you know center mass, you're done. If you don't know, you're not done. Imagine <clears throat> if I give you two rods, And one is positively charged. Controversial point, one is negative charge. Okay. It's a thin rod, so don't take the dimension seriously. And uh, the lambda is the same. 
this is length two and this is length one. Okay. Find the dipole moment of the system. Only magnitude. I just want to magnitude. Oh, just just a minute, just a minute. Let me make it clear. This will be. I have to just make a dipole moment. Actually, I want to make a dipole of a, a dipole moment of a dipole. Oh, this is fine, right? So you can clearly see the net charge of system is zero, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. And because the net charge of system is zero, it means this will act as a dipole, and it will have a dipole moment, which is easy to find by taking the center. So here, origin will not matter, right? Yeah. So tell me the answer. So what is the answer? It is pretty simple. This is the center of pole plus. Sir, I think I got it. Yeah, tell me the answer. Five L square lambda by four. Five. L square. Lambda by four. Uh, lambda yeah, and by four. So I think that should be the answer maybe. So you can see this is L. The half is this is L by two. So this is how much? Root five L by two, right? Root five. Yeah. And uh, now the answer is simple. So the charge is how much? Two lambda. L. Two lambda L. Into root five L by two. Yes. Yeah, I forgot to take the root. Yeah, got it. It is root five lambda L. Is Sir, I got this answer. Very good. So tell me the answer for this question. It's again very famous. Dipole moment is simply if you know the center mass, you are done. There is no physics here. First is physics. So if you have a semi-circular ring with positively charged, I mean uniformly charged, let's say the charge is K. At the center of curvature, you know center of curvature? It's a ring. So ring will have this curvature, center. So at the center of curvature, we have minus two. And R is the radius. What is the dipole moment of the system? <laughs> Let's see how many of you remember the center mass. Which simply means you don't know the center mass formula. That's why.
All right. So the time up. So for any semi-circular ring, what is the symptom mass? Two or by pi. So that's it. So you can say the center plus will be here. Yeah. And minus is here. The diagonal is Q two or by pi. Okay. Yes. You can also do by basic calculation the way you do. Like you can choose this. All data. Huh. Yeah. So you can take elementary charge at angle theta. So you can write as uh, R vector will be R cos theta I cap and R sin theta J cap. For that charge DQ, so you can say the DPE equals to for the plus part. So minus it is zero. So I can say the plus will have give you the right answer, right? So the DP we can write as DQ R. That's the definition. And DQ can write as uh, Q by pi R into R D theta. And R we can write as R cos theta I cap R sin theta J cap. This is Q by pi and R control side. And then we have, uh, I can take R common, cos theta d theta i cap plus and j cap. And then you integrate 0 to pi. So you can clearly see the graph of sine and cos. So sine will be like this between 0 to pi and cos will be. And therefore, the area under the cos curve will be 0. Correct. You can directly say this is going to be 0 answer. And the sign will give you the answer two times because this one quarter is 1. If you remember the basic area. So this will give you two answers. This will give you q r by pi, two times j cap, and that's it. So q into two r by j cap, or the way you want. Is this clear, guys? Yes. yes sir. So you can do it for uh, any kind of uh, arrangement. It is nothing to be the plus minus q only. So you can make a random uh, semi-circular ring. And then you take a third dimension. So what is the double moment? Quickly tell me only the value. Q into correct. So yeah. the center plus size is here. So we know this is two R pi. Yes. And you simply multiply with this, right? So for any configuration of uh, plus and minus charge, in which plus minus are equal in magnitude. You can always find the dipole moment just by looking at the center of mass concept. Right? So think like a charge as a mass and uh, take the distribution as a mass only and just calculate the center of mass. Uh, you will get the answer. Okay, so dipole dipole moment is clear, I hope so. Now uh, I can give you some challenging problem like this. So there's a rough estimation of a uh, Imagine we have an atom. Imagine we have an atom. In which 
take the electron as a not moving in orbit rather uniformly distributed over the entire volume so take electron let's say atomic number is z so take electron as as uniformly distributed so take uh, electron as uniformly distributed negative charge over the volume of the sphere so what we are going to take is the electron is uniformly distributed over the volume of a sphere z is the atomic number so how much electron we have z minus z right so the net charge the net negative charge is so the charge is z right yeah. Okay. yeah now if it is uniformly distributed what is the dipole moment now for this atom for this atom what is the dipole moment i think zero yeah it is definitely zero so the dipole because the central plus and central minus is coinciding coinciding yeah yes so that is a general model of atom so small size atoms are generally neutral or because non polar as the size of the atom becomes very really large they lose the symmetry so you can say the negative charge cloud will be asymmetrical and that asymmetry shifts the center of charge so they gain the natural dipole moment without any effort and that is the reason that a large size atom having the intrinsic dipole moment and therefore they undergo the dipole dipole interaction very easily and therefore the physical existence and let me give you the very nice example in case of iodine it exists as a solid right bromine as a liquid but uh, fluorine chlorine as a gas now how to explain this behavior in the same group of elements we have some gases some liquid and some solid also so the answer is very simple iodine exists as a solid because uh, in case of iodine the size is really huge and that huge size will lead to the asymmetrical distribution of the negative charge cloud you can think that way. and that will lead to the dipole so every iodine atom is a dipole and because of the dipole dipole interaction they combine together very strongly <clears throat> and the physical form of the iodine becomes solid bromine is having the relatively small size so the dipole strength is not as good as iodine and therefore the dipole interaction is there but not as strong as iodine it exists as a liquid now fluorine chlorine are very small in size therefore their symmetricity is quite intact and therefore they fail to create any dipole moment inherently and therefore they exist as a individual atom and as a gas so you can see that uh, you can easily explain the idea of interaction to the concept of dipole you might have heard about the fajans rule anyone yes yeah. sir what is fajans rule a uh, covalent character in an ionic uh, in ionic ionic compound yeah so how it happens so we have the large ions and small cations right yes yeah. large and small cations yes okay so let me demonstrate that using the external electric field so when we have charges they will have field so of course in chemistry the way we understand things are not in terms of physics i mean of course there is a very different way of explaining things there but if you want to understand the true logic you can always figure it out through the logic of physics and we'll get a very clear picture that what is exactly happening there 
So let's say if we have an atom and it is under the influence of some uniform electric field. So under the influence, I mean, in, I mean, influence of field, what will happen? The electron cloud will lose its symmetry. Correct. So to make it mathematically feasible, what we do is we keep the the electron cloud symmetrical. Rather, we shift the positive atom away from center. So now let's say the nucleus is shifted with respect to the cloud. It's the same thing. Either cloud is shifting with respect to the nucleus or vice versa. So it's a very sim simplistic model. So let's say the nucleus shifts somewhere here. Okay. And uh, let's say it shifts by a distance r. And the shift. Now you can clearly see something. What you can see? The center of plus and center of minus, are they coinciding now? No. 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 So what is the dipole moment? You can clearly see. The dipole moment will be how much? If R is the separation, if R is the shift, then? Z-E-R. Z-E into R? Yes. Yeah. Isn't it? Yes. Now the question is, if you look at the plus charge, the nucleus, nucleus is like experiencing two forces, if you realize. One force is the applied force, right? This is Q into V due to the external electric field. But the negative charge cloud will also have the uniform field distribution, if you remember. Yeah. So a negative charge cloud is like a negative charge uh, sphere. And we know the electric field due to the sphere. It is minus rho r by 3 epsilon. Or informally charge sphere, the field inside formula is rho r by 3 epsilon, yeah. isn't it? Yes. And therefore, if I draw the ABD of this charge somewhere, I'll go here. Three body diagram. There are two forces acting. One is the applied force due to the applied electric field, which I can address Q into E. I'll substitute Q later on as Z into E. But the negative charge density cloud will also attract towards the center, isn't it? Yeah. So that, that field will be how much? Q into rho r by 3 epsilon naught. Isn't it? Yes, sir. Yeah. And that calculation will give you the r value. So if I, for equilibrium, because that is, let's say that is at rest, for equilibrium, It's a very deep concept. I mean, so the force is written left direction was due to electrons. Yeah, yeah, of course. The electron is negative enough, so it will attract towards center. Oh, yes. For negative charge, the field will be terminating towards center. Now. Yes. Sir. So the field lines will be like this, isn't it? So a uh, negative yes, charge will create a field like this. I hope you can understand this part. Understood. Okay. Yes. So for equilibrium of nucleus, for equilibrium of nucleus, what you can write? Q into rho r by 3 epsilon naught is q into e so basically i was looking for r because r was not given it is under the influence of the field r got shifted right so r it turns out to be how much and if you want to write everything completely the row we can write as uh, z e upon 4 by 3 pi r cube right huh? Pi A cube, that A is the size of atom. So I need to give A also. So let's say the size of atom is A. So we can add as 4 by 3 pi A cube. In fact, you can also have the form of A equals to 
a not uh, uh, n square by z something like this for bold like atom but not for in general or you can say for a single electron system anyway we are not going to take this part ignore so this turns out to be how much uh, right it will be nine yeah? three f not uh, by row a row by charge so we'll go in the numerator side so okay. i think it will become three epsilon not e by z e into four by three pi q am i right Sir, I think it uh, it will reciprocate the electricity. Ah, am I making mistake? This yeah. is fine, na? Four by three, na? Yeah, this is fine. I'm saying it would be uh, three by two. So, so this is fine, na? So the Z D will be neuter and that will go up, na? Yeah. Four by three pi r cube, right? This entire term will go up, na? Ah, that will go up. That's fine. Anyway, I think this is correct. You can just check. Three, three cancel. What we are getting is four pi a cube upon z e absolutely not into sigma r. So the dipole moment will be how much we got? Z e r. Okay. Z e into r. But how much r we got? and that's very interesting that you will understand that this is coming out to be this comes out to be 4 pi a uh, a cube into epsilon not into e. okay and the in this is called this is called the induced dipole moment induced dipole moment which means whenever the atom comes under the influence of any external electric field it will acquire some dipole moment okay is this clear yes sir okay and also see here i for the simplicity i took the shifting of uh, the nucleus on the right i kept the so of course the electric field so we have a minus charge we have plus charge at the same place in the beginning the moment you apply the field here the plus will move along the field and minus will again the field and therefore there is a split of plus and minus and this we generally represent by the oval shape okay so when the center of plus and center of minus uh, they separate away then that is how we represent in uh, picture so you must have seen such oval shape picture in a uh, textbook for uh, dipole representation right yes sir so now you know why it is drawn like this right yes sir so the circle is for the coinciding center oval is for non coinciding center it is clear yes Yes, sir. So anyway, this is the dipole moment, and uh, there is something called dipole moment uh, per unit volume, or uh, this is called the induced dipole moment per unit volume. So there is a term in physics called polarization, which you write as P. It is defined as induced dipole moment. per unit volume so if i take this example particularly 4 pi a cube absolute not e and the volume you can write as 4 by 3 pi a cube and you can clearly see this entire term cancel out so the polarization turns out to be something very interesting 
3 epsilon naught e and therefore the polarization is a function of applied field uh, this is a rough estimate I and mean, of course we are not doing exact calculation so experimentally this is the proof actually this is an individual proof for the same so the way we define polarization so in general polarization P is defined as some constant into epsilon not into U. So the number three will not come always. So it's a spherical surface, so we got three, but if it is some uh, non-spherical, because if you talk about the molecule, so molecule shapes are not perfect sphere, right? It's like collection of many sphere. So in general, the polarization is defined as uh, the symbol is chi. We write as CHI. We read as chi. Okay. It's a very auspicious Greek symbol, which means energy. And the CHI is the initial first three letter of a country which we call China. Okay, so polarization and this chi is called susceptibility. Okay, this is a very advanced concept just because it was coming in the flow. So I thought of introducing here. It will be helpful to you in the next chapter in uh, capacitor. I'll give you a very uh, different derivation of Gauss law. So this formula you just need to remember that uh, it is something like this. So what does like polarization physically mean? Polarization means induced dipole moment current volume. That's it. It means a neutral molecule. Let's say a molecule which is non-polar when it is brought in the field of external electric field. I mean, you bring into presence of external electric field. Then their charge will not be intact the way they were, right? So there is, yes, a, yes. there is a chance that it will shift here and there. And the moment the center of plus and center of minus charge will shift, the entire molecule which you were, which was actually a non-polar will become polar. So we polarize the molecule, isn't it? But we, what we can say, we polarize the molecule yes, or sir. the medium, understood? So, which resulted in induced dipole, right? Yeah, of course. So, let's say India was a secular country, all religion was living together, but let's say some government came and they polarized the people. So, now they are separated, like they are not living together. That's polarization, also used in context of politics. Let's not use it. In physics, it's a separation of plus and minus. So to polarization, polarization basically means to separate the center of plus and minus. That's the whole idea. Understood? Clear? Yes. So this is called polarization, in which you separate things. And uh, this is the factor, this is the agent. So when we bring a cation and anion. So cation will act as agent for anion and vice versa. Isn't it? So both are agent of each other because every charge will create the electric field. Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So for every charge, the other charge is the source or the agent. So yeah. every charge, because see, I'm talking about the atoms atom will have the equal plus equal minus so atom is having the capability of becoming dipole yes or no yeah if you remember the very first page of today's lecture yes. i say that a system with non zero positive non zero negative but total zero is capable of becoming a dipole understood so every atom will have plus every atom will have minus now in symmetrical situation it is non polar but the moment to make it asymmetric, what will happen? It will become polar, polar molecule. So when you say polar molecule, you mean it will have 
dipole moment. Sometimes it happens because of the size, because of the asymmetry of the electron cloud distribution. Sometimes we induce by doing it intentionally. And when you try to induce, you need some source, some agent. And that is how that every plus, if you have cations and anions, they are the source and they can do this thing. Okay. So variety of logic which you study in chemistry, you can easily explain if you understand polarization. Because at the end of the entire discussion in chemistry, we have some bonding, some attraction, some repulsion. So those ideas are very helpful. Okay. Like if you try to study chemistry through the lens of physics, it will become logical. It will become like a maths. If you try to learn chemistry as a chemistry, you know what is happening, right? So you remember the methods. Okay. So in my case, when I was studying chemistry, because I was not reading with any teacher, so I was totally trying to understand chemistry for physics. So in a way, I develop a lot of logic for chemistry, which worked like a miracle. So it made things so simple that you can easily understand everything. Just a moment. I'll take a break of five minutes. We'll come back.
Hello, guys. Am I audible? Yes. yes. Now, once we are able to understand what is dapple, what is dapple moment, how, what is the meaning of induced dapple moment, how it is achieved, what is the purpose? The question is, what we do in physics with dapple? So there are certain calculations that we are supposed to do. So dapple dapple interaction means the force of one dapple onto another dapple. But we know that force is always due to the electric field, right? So the obvious question is, we are supposed to understand or learn something called electric field due to dipole moment. Due to dipole no, moment. So now the next thing is <coughs> calculation of electric field due to a dipole. Now it's not very difficult, it's pretty easy. And there are multiple cases we'll take one by one. So case one is called at axial position. And the word axial is also called end on position. So what is the meaning of a dipole axis? So if we have equal minus and equal plus charge at some separation, so first of all, don't think about dipole. Let's think we have two charges. <clears throat> so let's say if I give you a pair of charge, one is plus, other is minus, equal in value, opposite in nature. And if the point P is located along the axis of the apple, the axis means the line joins the plus and minus, it's called axis. So <clears throat> the point P lies on this axis. And the distance of the, of the point P with us to the center of dipole is X. We know the electric field due to the plus charge, correct? Due to the point charge. So if we know the electric field due to point charge, can we find the electric field to these two charges? Yes or no? Yes. So you simply take as two separate charges don't think of dipole, just find the electric field at point. Tell me the answer. And also tell me the direction at point. Is it right, left, or whatever? Got it, sir. Yeah, tell me the answer. So for plus Q, uh, KQ by X minus D by 2 whole square. Yeah. I also. Towards right. Towards right. Yeah. yeah. And for minus Q, KQ by X plus D by 2 whole square towards left. So we can subtract the net value. Yeah. Yes. So you can go one more, more step and uh, try to simplify this. Luckily, both directions are in the same line, so it's easy to add or subtract. So what is the answer coming after some simplification, taking the LCM and common, so you can take KQ common. 
the calcium and uh, do the simplification. Tell me the answer. Hello. Hello. Yes, tell me. Sir, it is 2K uh, Q DX. Uh, so okay. 2DX upon uh, X square minus D square upon 4 the whole square. Very good. That sounds. See, there's nothing like a dipole. It's so simply you have two charge, you write the answer, you're happy. So this is the final answer, right? <coughs> so once you find the <coughs> electric field by the regular uh, charge by charge scenario, dipole is an approximation. What is the meaning of dipole? So we say that this setup will act as a dipole if X is much bigger than D. So there is something called dipole approximation. I'll put as a word. So definitely dipole, dipole interaction is uh, the interacting object is slightly far away from the object. We don't talk about the dipole dipole interaction within the atoms, right? <coughs> so the simple thing is that whenever we are trying to understand that uh, uh, that if the a given arrangement will act as a dipole or not, the assumption, the inherent assumption is the location at which you are trying to interact with or trying to find the electric field. That location should be much far away than your separation, or you can see your dimension. So dipole approximation is when x is much bigger than d <clears throat> so generally x will be in fraction of angstrom because you can see the atom dimension is in angstrom and uh, we when we calculated the r value uh, you can see the nucleus was slightly away from the center so we can clearly say that uh, that it is much less than one angstrom. So since angstrom is the D, so even micrometer is much bigger than D. And therefore at a micrometer separation, they will interact as a dipole. Okay. <clears throat> so it is always the relative term. So if X is much bigger than D, the setup we call dipole otherwise we just treat as two charts so when x is really exceeding the d value by a large margin then the electric field formula will turn out to be really nice <coughs> so it will become k q d into x upon now x is much bigger than d so i can ignore this term compared to x right so what i will write here x bar and therefore the answer is how much 2k qd upon x cube now the qd we can replace by the the definition of dipole moment which is always qd <coughs> the answer is 2k p by x cube i should have taken r but anyway that's that's all. so the dipole formula for electric field so electric field to dipole is what 
so we got the answer is 2 okay dipole moment upon x cube now if you remember the charge it was k cube by r is correct yeah. and for dipole it is logical because the d has come in the numer numerator so to keep the dimensional sanity the x must increase its power that's also logical <clears throat> so the moment you replace the charge by p the x will also have the extra power because we have to keep the dimension same right also you can see something <clears throat> The direction of dipole moment is right and the direction of net field is the direction of net field is also right yeah. and that is the conclusion that <clears throat> at any axial position the direction of electric field will be same as the direction of dipole moment vector and this is very crucial because this will help you in writing in vector notation. So, because uh, K and PE having same direction, you can simply write like this. You can keep everything constant, I mean, like a scalar. Just make PE vector. This is the direction form. So, this is the vector form. So, a dipole of dipole moment P at a distance x, uh, which is much bigger than its uh, d. <clears throat> so, on its axial position, it will create an electric field equals to the value 2k P by r cube or x cube. Why cube? Because uh, k cube by r square. So, q into d will come, r will come, r cube. <coughs> Dimension, things like that. Okay, so the next case is given a system of two charges. Again, no need to think about dipole. In the beginning, we only think about charge. Dipole is approximation. So we have charge minus two. <coughs> plus uh, D separation. Now, <coughs> imagine there's a point P from the center of the two charges in the perpendicular bisector direction. And again, I'm taking X. So you can use the principle of superposition in vector form because now the direction won't be same. So can you find the net electric field? Tell me guys. Yes. Do it. So this position is called equatorial position or there's one more name, which is very classical name.
broad side on position i don't know what is the meaning of this but yeah broad hello you got the answer yes just one. tell me k q d upon uh, x square plus uh, d d by 2 the whole square raised to like the whole raised to 3 by 2 very good that's correct answer this is the answer nothing we can do now if i talk about the dipole approximation So x must be much bigger than d. And if that is the case, what will get the answer? <coughs> Tell me, guys. K Q D upon x cube. So I can write as k p by x cube, right? Because q d is p. But there is a problem here. The direction of dipole moment is like this. What is the direction of electric field at the point P? It's vertically upwards. Hmm. I mean, due to um, both the charges. Upward? Huh? I know, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, Mugga, tell me, what is the direction at P? So what you asked? Direction, direction. of E. Uh, direction of e. So you, when you solve, we got the direction also, no? Upward, right? No, oh. not upward. It's like leftwards kind. It is left one. Yeah. So we can see clearly that plus will repel. And negative will attract. Negative will attract. Oh, okay. And because of symmetry, the repulsion is same as the attraction in value. Same charge, same separation, same value. <laughs> so how you derive the answer? Your answer is correct, but uh, not able to understand. Sir, that. but uh... <clears throat> hmm. Oh, theta, and theta. it will be exactly angle bisector <clears throat> because the net angle is 2 theta and the resultant will be bisector of the angle so it will be theta and therefore E will be exactly opposite of the dipole moment do you realize this yeah so minus will come in vector form This clear? Yes, sir. So at equal now, what you are supposed to remember at equal position, the direction of electric field will be opposite of the dipole vector, <coughs> dipole moment vector. At axial, it is parallel. Axial same, <coughs> equatorial opposite. Understood? Yes. Sir. Yes. So the obvious question is uh, we will be interested in finding the field direction at any random point, right? <laughs> so what if <coughs> we have a dipole And now we are going to take the dipole approximation case only. So the dipole is given and we have to take the case three.
in general position Uh, we will consider <coughs> dipole the benefit is the moment you assume or treat as a dipole you can replace the two charge by a single vector and once we have a vector it is easy to do the mathematical manipulation that is the whole idea of dipole the moment i go for the dipole approximation <coughs> i will get rid of the two charge idea so now what i have is a, a simple vector and uh, we have to just manipulate that vector accordingly to our benefit so let's say i choose a point which is neither axial is neither at x position nor at equatorial position rather at some general position and from center again with the same trick i'll prefer writing as r because it's not good for say x <laughs> so let's say r is a R vector is the point location, and uh, the angle it makes is theta. So dipole moment vector and R vector makes an angle theta with each other. Is this clear? Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so if you think that this is this seems a difficult question, but Again, we can use the principle of superposition and how to apply the principle of superposition in this scenario. So what we do is we resolve the vector along the R So instead of one actual dipole, I can think of two mutually perpendicular dipoles. And because these are component of the actual, so what is the value of the parallel one? If the actual is P, this will be how much? Cos theta. Cos theta. P cos theta, very good. <laughs> and this will be? Sin theta. Sin theta. And we know the answer. We know the answer for each component separately. Let's say if, if there is only P e cos theta. If P e cos theta is alone present, assume the other component is not there. For that P e cos theta, the point P will behave as which position? Axial. And we know the answer for axial. What is the answer? 2K P e cos theta by RQ. Very good. Very good. Excellent. And what will be the direction? Same direction as that of dipole. Exactly. So now this we can call radial component of electric field ER and the ER we can easily write as 2k P e cos theta upon R. So you guys have correct it. So how many of you have understood this part? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Understood. Now, once this is done, just forget about this. Go to the other component and then again try to understand what is happening. For the other component, the point P will act as which point? Equatorial. Equatorial. And we know the answer for that also. Yeah. So that equatorial value is called E theta. And what will be the value of E theta? Negative of KP E sin theta by RQ. RQ. So as of now, I can attach value as KP center by RQ. Yes. Okay. And the direction of E theta is going to be opposite of the dipole moment? Yeah. Yes. Like this? Uh, yes. This is the <coughs> E theta vector, but we are looking for the net value. So now we can do the 
वेक्टर समेशन सो फॉर टू म्यूचुअली पर पेंडिकुलर वेक्टर व्हाट इज द रिजल्टेंट वेक्टर गाइस जस्ट अगेन इज इट इज लाइक दिस यस एंड दिस इज द ईपी वेक्टर एंड दिस ईपी वेक्टर विल मेक सम एंगल अल्फा विद दैट्स ईआर वेक्टर ओके सो what is the value of ep vector the magnitude part so do we give it after simplifying or just the skeletal form no just uh, you can square no yeah so yeah. that's er square plus e theta square Plus two e r e theta cos alpha. No, no, cos ninety. Sorry, it is ninety, right? It's yeah, a yeah, it's a it's a Pythagoras, so no mm. need to do further. So because we have mutually <coughs> or perpendicular components, so we can get the answer directly. Yeah. And if you substitute, just don't. You substitute until we learn. Okay, so if you simplify, what are you getting? You can see K P E by R cube upon R cube root of one plus three cos square theta. Very good. You can add that. Yes. And what is interesting <coughs> that if you put theta equals to zero, automatically it becomes the axial value. So once you put theta equals to zero, it becomes four, which is again two K P E by R cube. And if you put theta equals to ninety, it is equatorial. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Now there are many questions that you will be asked from this topic. If I extend this line, this angle is called angle between E T. And PE vector. That's interesting, right? Do you realize this? The phi is called the angle between yeah, huh, PE yes. and P. Yes. Yes. Which is the resultant electric field at the point P and the dipole moment. Yes, Can you see that? Yes. And because this is also alpha. So from the property of triangle, the phi we can write as theta plus alpha. So as you change the theta, alpha will change, <coughs> and as theta and alpha will change, phi will change. So this is a very interesting question. That for what value of theta? <coughs> for what value of theta? So, for what will be the phi becomes ninety, which means at what angle we can see E P vector as perpendicular to the P vector, because we can see clearly that as we go from zero to ninety, the electric field flips. <coughs> In a way, 
electric field must be going through all angle, right? Yeah. So at zero, it is like this. And then as you change the theta, it will change like this. And then And in fact, at a 90, it simply flips. <clears throat> so this is zero degree. This is the 90 degree only. So at 90 degree, the electric field is flipping. So I'm looking for the case at what angle? Because see, if at 90, it is flipping. So at what? angle theta it will be like this anyone getting this idea what i have just wrote so please explain once again you can see the resultant electric field direction yeah you can see the dipole moment direction actual yes sir. you can see the angle between them yes and uh, for every angle theta, the phi will change. Yes, sir. Yeah. So question is at what angle, at what angle theta, the phi will be 90. <clears throat> it is like this. At some angle, it will be like this actually. 90. No. At theta, you can see it is like this. So if I turn a little bit more, it may become like this, no? Yeah. And in this case, the dipole moment and the electric field will be mutually perpendicular. Yeah. So I'm looking for what is the angle when this will happen. Okay. <clears throat> So one part which I simply uh, missed intentionally that we can find the alpha factor from here. What is tan alpha? E theta by e. E e theta theta by by e. And if you divide e theta by e, you can see kp by rq will cancel out. What you get is sine theta by two cos theta. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, Basically, theta. alpha depends on theta directly by the relation this. So alpha is a known term, it's not unknown. So given angle alpha, we know theta, uh, we, given theta, we know alpha. So given theta, we know alpha already. This is known to us. So what I'm asking? If phi is 90 degree, implies theta plus alpha is also 90. <coughs> implies alpha is 90 minus theta. So we can take 10 both sides. So 10 alpha is how much? Cot theta? You can see that <clears throat> the answer is how much? Tan inverse plus minus root two, which means it can be in any quadrant. So I have taken a dipole, then uh, 90 degree will be possible in four different quadrant, <clears throat> but the angle will be same in every quadrant, okay? So when tan theta is uh, this much value, you can take a positive value only. The EP will be perpendicular to so taking positive value.
respect tan inverse root 2 if you look at the electric field it will be exactly right angle to the dipole moment vector okay yeah we could also solve in a different way imagine this is the z axis and we have a dipole so we have a tiny dipole located like this <coughs> and uh, from the dipole moment direction we take a point p here at a distance are <coughs> If the dipole moment of this is P, at this point, we will have two component ER and E theta like this. You can see clearly. Because the, in this case, the components are different, right? So P yes. cos theta is like this. And the P center is like this. Isn't it? Yes. So the ER is like this, NH direct. Like this. Okay. <clears throat> and if <clears throat> I draw a vertical line and a horizontal line, this will be theta. This will be theta. Yes or no? Yes. Let's say I want only this component to exist. Let's call it EX. I want the Z component to vanish. Okay. So I, I what I want is the resultant will be along the X axis only when the EZ is zero. Yes. So if EZ becomes zero, because that's one if If only this component I want to exist, then other component must be canceling each other. Yeah. Yes. So <clears throat> this implies ER cos theta must be equal to how much? E theta sine theta. Very good. So you can clearly see that uh, tan theta equals to <clears throat> ER by E theta, yeah. which yes. itself is 2 cot theta. Oh. Which means again we can add that tan is for theta is two. So this is again tan inverse. You can do this way also. <clears throat> because I want the resultant EX. So I want the EX <clears throat> only. So I will make either zero. Okay. So you will get this, this is from zero directly. So uh, <clears throat> what Erodom has asked is like find EX and EZ actually. I mean, of course, not, not to make zero, but uh, <clears throat> you're supposed to find EX. What is EX? Tell me. What is EX here? Hello, hello, hello. What is the value of EX if you resolve and get? E theta cos theta. E theta cos theta and? That's it. ER, si ER sine theta. ER sine theta. And what is EZ? ER cos theta plus. Plus. Minus E theta sine theta. That's why I say always study vectors. The basic resolution of vector is very, very important skill that you must pick up as early as possible. Okay, so we are done with the the field part, and then next we are going to start the potential. So the next picture will be the last picture for the dipole moment, and uh, we will be able to finish the entire electrostatics. Okay.
So bye and take care. See you on the next lecture. Your so job is class is on Sunday, right? Yeah, next week Sunday. Sunday, okay, again. Sunday, I am like uh, now trying to keep on a regular basis morning. So nine to twelve is okay for all. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Anyone having any any objection? Raise your hand. Okay, so I'll keep nine a.m. to twelve p.m. Right. Yes. Sunday. Okay. So sir. you all will be free by the evening. I mean, then you can also enjoy your evening. Okay. Bye and take care, guys. Please you, solve sir. solve the sheet, everyone. Finish the yes, sheet. Yes, sir. Good night, sir. Good night.